So good evening, uh, Fabriani Aquarello leaders and some of the international watercolor platform admins also. And we are again live in, um, with our audience uh, in the web. And uh, this meeting is dedicated to the um, uh, um, Raul Ocorn interview of the leader. It is kind of a continuation of the uh, meeting we had two days ago with Shinka Gang. And it was very interesting to have the opinion of those great artists about a common topic. So we go on and Raul, please take the microphone and go on. Thank you, Anna. When we talk about leaders, one thing comes to our mind that is who leads or commands, who is a support system, who not only cares and supports, but shares too. Today here with us, are many of the leaders of Fabriano in Acorello. Before I start, I would like to thank Anna Masinisa and Fabriano community for having me as a host. Whichever country or place you belong from, I believe my words find you healthy and safe. It's an honor for me being a part of the 12th successive year of Fabriano in Acorello. I am Rahul Chakravarti and traveler watercolorist from India, a proud member of Fabriano in Nicarello, and co-owner of an art tech company called Jumbish. I would request our leaders to introduce themselves before we start today's interview. Let's start with Aileen Esquieta. Aileen, please introduce yourself. Good evening, everybody. I'm Aileen Esquieta. I'm from the Philippines. I'm an artist and an art educator. And as a watercolorist also, I paint in the Eastern and Western manner. And over the years, I believe I have blended East and West in my art. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, let's go to Christopher. Christopher Reed from South Africa. Hi, I'm Christopher Reed. I'm a South African artist. Um, the head of the watercolor society uh, known as WASA, Watercolor Art Southern Africa. Excited to be joining Fabriano for the first painting several media, watercolor pastel and acrylic. Uh, I have a content. Contemporary realism style. I do a lot of plein air painting. You can see more of my work at reedsarts.com to see you all in Italy next year. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Victoria, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello, dear friends. Uh, I'm Victoria Grigorieva, a professional artist uh, based in uh, Kiev, Ukraine, and uh, graduated the National Art School and then the National Academy of Fine Art. And um, I have been teaching art um, more than 10 years, uh, and I'm founder of the Watercolor School, Victoria Art School, based in Kiev, Ukraine also, and founder of the International Festival of Mini Watercolors, Mini Watercolor Kiev. And um, I like uh, plein air painting, uh, uh, to paint a lot of, uh, in my studio, I participate in the numbers of uh, international Biennale exhibitions. And um, I am so proud to, to be uh, leader of international community of Fabriano and Aquarela. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, let's go to Ladan, Ladan Oranji from Iran. Ladan, you there? Uh, I, 
Uh, I am Lozano Randy from Iran. I'm a visual artist. Uh, I have an AM in painting and have been teaching uh, at university for 30 years. Uh, I have also experience uh, in urban art, uh, such as mural uh, and urban sculpture. Some of my activities uh, um, are judging in um, uh, several art journals. Uh, have and participate in more than a 40 workshop and 60 solo and uh, group exhibition. And I received several national and international uh, awards for art activity and painting. Thank you. Thank you, Lala. Uh, Aiden Orelli from Ireland. Aiden, please introduce. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Aidan, Aidan O'Reilly. I'm, uh, thank you, Raoul, for the introduction. I'm very happy and very proud to represent Ireland for Fabriano and Acquarello as leader. And it's great to be able to bring artists from Ireland to the international community. Uh, I hope to, that we will be able to join you sometime in Italy. But for the meantime, we will join together online today and over the next few days. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden. I believe that we are going to meet soon. So our next leader is uh, Jineb Shesham. Jineb, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Uh yeah, hello, I'm Jineb Shasham. Uh, I am uh, uh, a leader of uh, North Africa, so uh, it's uh, an honor for me to be part of the uh, Fabriano community. We are new to this community. I have never been to uh, Fabriano Aquarello Festival, but uh, I'm looking forward to. I studied art in uh, Glassell School in uh, Houston. Uh, I didn't specialize in watercolor, but after which uh, I, uh, I start to uh, do some experiments on uh, watercolor. Thank you, Zeno. Uh, let's go to Karsten. Karsten Willand from Germany. Hi, everybody. My name is Karsten from Germany. I'm a watercolor painter since 2016, so I'm pretty new to this subject uh, because uh, after a career for as a graphic artist uh, but quitting this I rediscovered watercolor painting and then I was invited to the uh, great Fabriano festival in 2018 uh, and this changed my life forever and I'm so happy to be inside this community and after the, these few years, I'm I'm country leader for Germany, which is such a great honor to, to be with you guys, and it's so much fun. Thank you. Thank you, Kustin. Uh, uh, nice to be here with you. Uh, Wayne Wiggle uh, from Australia. I would request Wayne, Wayne, please introduce yourself. Hi, Raul and Anna and all the other leaders. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, it's 1 a.m. in the morning here in Australia, but it's really exciting to represent Australia to Fabriano since 2018. I am a watercolour artist, even though I've got a spray painting behind me um, and pastels, but um, we are very excited to be part of Fabriano and as an artist that has painted all her life, um, to have 32 Australians in Fabriano hanging in the exhibition this year is very exciting and I'm very proud to represent you all. Thank you. Thank you, you Wynne. Uh, I would request Min Dam from uh, Poland. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, I am Ming Dam from Poland, but also from uh, Vietnam. Um, I'm uh, very happy to be part of the Fabriano event uh, and to represent Poland uh, uh, in this um, uh, uh, in this ex exhibition, uh, I uh, studied architecture. I uh, paint only with watercolor, but I'm also doing uh, drawing and photograph and filming um, a little bit uh, of uh, a little bit of uh, let's say everything. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Min. Uh, thank you all for your 
wonderful introduction. Uh, now we have understood who are here. Uh, let's go to the interview session. Uh, my first question to you all, uh, that what's your perspective about art? Uh, I would like to start with Eileen. Uh, Eileen, can you share your view on that? Eileen. Yes, yes. Thank you, Raul. Um, thinking about that question, um, at its uh, very basic, art is uh, an appreciation, appreciation of the beauty around us. And then through art, we can express our feelings, our emotions. And so it becomes a form of communication to reach out to others, how we feel about things, how we connect with them. Uh, that would be what art is for me. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Christopher, uh, would like to hear from your side. Hi. Art, art is a form of communication. And for me, there are things that I see in nature um, or even just the light falling on something normal that are beautiful to me. And it's a way to share that beauty with someone else where you can focus in on, make them see, you know, what it is that you appreciated about it. Um, it's also meditative because when I'm painting, I'm totally at peace. I'm creating something and it's, it's just what I love doing. Yes, nice to hear, uh, Christopher. Uh, Victoria, can you share your view on that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for asking. And uh, art is uh, my life and it's uh, so natural for me to be in art and live in art. Uh, was, I was painted from my childhood and still in process of uh, growing and discovering new in, in art. And I see that now contemporary art is involving uh, in the digital space and uh, it's something new, interesting, and opens up and many possibilities for creativity. And I like it and it's interesting for me, but um, I think uh, that people uh, will miss uh, the real uh, uh, creativity and uh, touching the real uh, piece of art, uh, and uh, then they will return to um, to this uh, communication with uh, real objects of art and in, in the new development of uh, the spiral in, uh, in our life. Thank you. Yeah. So, so substantial, yeah. Uh, let's go to Ladan. Uh, Ladan, can you share your uh, perspective about art? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think the nature of the art um, it's a controversial issue among the experts um, and uh, except uh, academic and experts, the uh, public of any um, society also has its uh, own um, definition for this concept and phenomena. Uh, definitions that have been uh, formed uh, in a historical context um, and have left uh, various uh, manifestations in uh, literature and uh, popular culture of society. And sometimes have differences with uh, understanding of uh, academy. Uh, people from one culture uh, or background might think of a certain artwork differently than other people. Mm from other culture. Um, I don't know uh, you know Bob Ross or not, but the funny thing is uh, that my mom uh, thinks Bob Ross is better painter than me. Uh, it, uh, uh, to sum it up, uh, I think art uh, contributes um, to make meanings of uh, visual culture, culture uh, that uh, has the power uh, to influence our uh, personal view of life, and it's uh, very personal, I think. Thank you. So wonderful to hear from you, Ladan. I uh, would request Aydan to share your uh, viewpoint of, about this one, this perspective of art. 
Hi, thank you. Um, my perspective of art is um, it's a way of life. It's not uh, a career, a job. It's in from the morning till the sleeping. It's art. Uh, it's even if I'm doing a different activity, it's working as an artist. Uh, it's, it's more and more I see art now as a tribal activity, a group activity, not to work in isolation. That's what I love so much about uh, Fabriano and Aquarello and all the other festivals. Um, so even if it's not paint, it's not watercolor, I'm making sculpture, or if I'm in a country, in a city, I'm there as an artist and I can see the buildings. I see them from the point of view of how the bricklayer laid the bricks and how the architect worked and how the artists embellished the building. So it's, it's a way of life. And I feel very honored and privileged to be able to work as an artist. Thank you. Absolutely, Aidan. When we see you and uh, we can find it out how insightful and uh, how reflection your art is reflecting from every part of your behavior. And uh, truly you are creative and uh, genius. So uh, let's go to uh, our next leader. Uh, that is uh, Geneve. Geneve, can you share your point of view on this? Uh, well, uh, uh, art for me is a kind of a translation to universal language uh, because as we are uh, nations and uh, countries and we speak different languages, uh, uh, but of course humanity and art connect uh, us uh, to connect uh, each other uh, because oh, we are using this uh, universal language, which is uh, art. And uh, also, um, art for me is uh, this uh, uh, flow of the uh, translation of this flow of emotions and thoughts, you know, and uh, inner language. Uh, uh, and uh, that's what uh, make every art unique and it reflects every uh, uh, character and uh, every personality. So, uh, uh, as we always want to show our art to uh, people and uh, uh, have this uh, kind of, uh, uh, we want to, uh, to be um, uh, successful, it means that uh, we want to, to uh, bring our uh, talents and our thoughts and our spirit uh, to others. So it's kind of uh, a really connection and uh, it's, uh, uh, amazing uh, way of uh, connecting with uh, people and uh, uh, how people connect to each other too. Like it's a, uh, it's a tool to, to connect to. Thank you, Gina. Uh, interesting uh, findings like uh, this is the connecting tool and uh, it's a flow of emotions, inner flow of you know, emotions. Yeah, many insightful uh, perspective we, we have got from your uh, answer. Uh, let's go to our uh, next leader, Kustin. Uh, can you share something, some, some of your views on this? Thank you. Yeah, so um, art for me is a very complex uh, thing, but uh, first of all, I would say it's a, a great, uh, kind of communication because it, it it does work worldwide and if you see a, a picture from a painter from the united states or from africa or from wherever you probably understand it and you you can look into the soul of the uh the painter the artist and uh, he's he or she is they are sharing their point of view of the world with us which is um Pretty, pretty impressive to me. And uh, this is why I think this uh, Fabiano Festival is such a great thing. So to see watercolor paints from all over the world. But for me in person, uh, art is uh, mainly a th therapy where I can go into a dialogue with myself. Um, so I started uh, with watercolor painting after a deep depression. And uh, in these days, I. Unfortunately, I, I have to deal with it again, but painting helps me pretty pretty good to, to get into a dialogue with myself, to, um, to understand myself. And it's, it's like a kind of meditation too. So 
there are so many wonderful aspects about art. So I, I could talk about two hours about this, but uh, I, I guess this is enough for the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Garson. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a therapy and healing tool. Yes, it is. It is absolutely uh, valid. Uh, let's go to our uh, next uh, leader, Wen. Uh, shower your some thought on this. Ah, it's um, a very exciting thing. Art for me is like a window or a door um, because you can open it. You can it, you can step outside the door and travel virtually or figuratively or in real time most of the time. Um, you meet so many people, you go on exciting journeys to explore either backwards uh, teachers about the history of what we have been, where we have been, and it talks about the future of where we're going. But then you can close the door or the window and come back inside and as Carsten says, you can be more introspective and private and you can paint and explore your own inner journey. And that for me is what art is all about, being able to step outside or come back in and explore internally what um, is important. True, Thank true. You. Absolutely true. Uh, really, I can connect. Uh, I can connect with your perspective on this. And I believe most of these uh, leaders uh, would connect with you. Uh, next, uh, let's go to our uh, uh, favorite artist, uh, leader, Min. Min, share some of your thoughts on this. Uh, thank you very much. Um, for me, uh, art is like a, it's like a language, like a common language, uh, uh, like a, uh, at this moment we speak in English, but uh, I believe that art is it's uh, even more common than, than than English. With art, we can share uh, our um, uh, thoughts, our emotion, and um, I'm gonna say that art is like a like a lang language very similar to math. Math we use uh, logic to talk, and uh, with art we use uh, everything else except logic to uh, exchange our experience. Um, so um, uh, to be an artist is like, um, it's important um, to express yourself the way how you live, the way how you talk and share things, uh, to be honest with yourself and to be, uh, to be um, original. Thank you very much. Thank you, Min. Uh, you have mentioned one point very uh, uh, rightly, and it is called like the left brain and the right brain, logic and rationality, and then the emotional part that, that we are dealt with in the art. And sometimes we make a balance between the rationality and these emotions. Nice, nice to hear from you all. And in that case also, I really want to share my perspective as well. Uh, I believe art is a journey towards to my soul. Uh, it is purely uh, a journey. As like journey, art has many faces, uh, like explorations, sharing, boundless reach, freedom of expression, learning, unlearning, mistakes, full of mistakes, frustration, and last but not the least, failure. And uh, I believe these are the aspects of art in my life. I see art in this way. So let's go to our next level of our uh, question. Uh, that is, um, what's your perspective about watercolor? So I would this time start with Mean. Uh, what you think? What's your perspective about watercolor, Mean? Uh, thank you, Raul. Um, for, um, I always follow uh, three principles: um, being, knowing, and sharing. So um, being that means that um, with watercolor, with uh, art, uh, you need to be uh, you need to be honest with, with uh, honest with um, with your style, with your motive, with your subjects. Uh, you need to develop the artistic uh, side of uh, of the watercolor or of of your painting. Um, uh, the second thing is the is the knowing. Knowing is mean uh, I mean by developing your skill by mastering your techniques. And the last thing is sharing. Sharing is, is what we do right now. We share our, pas our passion uh, to, uh, to other people, to other artists. We teach. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Min. Uh, Win, can you, can you share your view on this? Yes. For me, watercolor is a real passion. 
Um, we're about to start the Australian Watercolour Muster and the theme for our Australian Watercolour Muster is going to be the chemistry of watercolour because I think that's the thing for me that I really find fascinating is being able to take the pigment and the mix of water and let that work together on the paper or on the new surfaces like canvas and board. But for me, watercolour has that intrinsic uh, mystery and chemical um, chemistry that the colours combining, they bring the spirit of the subject that you're working on totally together. And for me, that's the magic of watercolour because it's one of the only, I mean, you can break down other mediums and use them in a similar way, but watercolour has its own special sort of chemical reaction and beauty that you don't find in other mediums. So for me, this is the true beauty of watercolour and the reason that I focus on that most of the time. Thanks. Yes, it's magic. They're totally, truly uh... Appreciate it. Uh, so let's go to our next leader, uh, Kustin. Uh, can you share your opinion on this? Yes. Yeah, so uh, lately, in, in the last years, watercolor has become my life. But um, before I started with watercolor, I tried some other medias like uh, acrylic painting and oil painting and everything else, drawing. But uh, in watercolor, I found freedom um, because it's so easy to use uh, the tools. Okay, it's, it's, it's hard to achieve a, a, a certain level of um, professionality, but um, the start is so easy and everybody could paint. And um, this is what I find so fascinating about watercolor together with other things that you have to combine uh, random things that, that happen on the paper with uh, your inspiration. And um, so I would be glad if uh, watercolor would be more um, popular here in Germany, because in Germany, I, I still have the feeling it's, uh, yeah, it's something that old ladies do. Most people think that. And um, so, since I'm a member of the uh, German Watercolor Society, I, I try to show people that it's more than this. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Yeah, we understand that this kind of um, uh, uh, history of watercolor, always every, every uh, country, irrespective of any place, uh, we get this kind of uh, scenario. Uh, let's go to uh, Zineb and understand what she wants to say about her perspective about watercolor. Zineb. Oh, hi. So, uh, yeah, watercolor is uh, fascinating for me because uh, uh, every time it was, uh, was watercolor, uh, uh, something happened different what uh, we were expecting. So. Every time we have accidents and uh, sometimes it's very happy accident and uh, we learn from those uh, accidents. Actually, uh, also it is uh, fascinating because uh, 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 this chemistry of uh, paper and how it behaves with the uh, water and how it accepts and absorbs those part part particulars and those uh, pigments uh, uh, it depends uh, how uh, the paper was done. So every time the artist has to uh, observe and uh, experiment uh, on this paper, and uh, it's really uh, uh, hand-eye uh, co coordination when we are painting uh, watercolor. And uh, you know that uh, we have to be fast and uh, we plan ahead, but every time uh, what the, uh, the the what it comes out from uh, our work sometimes it impress us. Um, also, they said that uh, apparently water has uh, the, uh, seven steps uh, of behavior on the paper. So uh, I'm not expert on that, but uh, I want to really to to know how and uh, maybe uh, search more on uh, how. Uh, the uh, pigment and uh, uh, the, the water and the paper can uh, finally make this uh, very interesting uh, 
uh, transparent painting. So this is in general uh, what I think about uh, watercolor. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Zinov. Uh, let's go to our next leader, uh, Aiden. Hello, thank you. Uh, my perspective on um, watercolor, uh, I think it was Wien said uh, the word magic. So definitely there, it is the magic which appeals to me. It is the light, it's about the light. Um, I'm a light sensitive creature. I'm attracted to the light. I'm like a moth attracted to the light. And for watercolor, it's transparency allows me to play with the light and to appreciate the light. Uh, light ever changing every day, it's a melody. Uh, it's, it's the beauty of watercolor. There are other mediums, plastic paint, uh, oil paint, uh, they have their beauty. But for me, the light is reflecting off the paint, not reflecting through the paint. So watercolor, it's, it's like stained glass. And as other people have said, it's such a versatile medium and water itself is life giving. It's, I could be here all day to talk about <laughs> watercolor. It's just such a fascinating thing. And to see a group of watercolor painters, I suppose it's like seeing a group of moths attracted to the light. <laughs> They're all flitting and flickering around the light, all watercolor artists all around the world, uh, getting up and celebrating. Light. That's why I love this time of the year. It's bright at five o'clock in the morning, and it's not dark till ten o'clock. Uh, I tend to be a creature of the of the light. So, thank you. So, if I ask you in one word, define watercolor. What do you say? Uh, I will steal wind word magic. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, let's to go to our next leader, Ladan. Ladan, share your views on this. Um, thank you. Mm, I. I think uh, this medium uh, can produce a uh, painting effect which no other medium uh, can match. It's uh, an, a smart uh, medium. Um, I can easily express my feeling by it, but uh, it can be very challenging uh, just right at uh, the moment of the spontaneity. Uh, thrilling experience happens. Um, it seems we are pretty out of control, uh, medium. Uh, and I think this is uh, the one uh, frustrating thing about the watercolor uh, for beginners and uh, intermediate students. Mm. Uh, and something like um, shading one color is, uh, into another color is uh, hard for them. But despite this uh, medium is uh, very hard to work. I recommend my students to start with because um, uh, they learn work um, more quickly and freely and uh, learn uh, to allow uh, the watercolor to uh, it seems and uh, they uh, could just uh, watching uh, the paint move around and uh, enjoy. Uh, Actually, um, in my opinion, uh, for me, watercolor meaning uh, is uh, connected with Fabriano with Anna, uh, and I can't uh, I can't separate uh, Fabriano with Anna from uh, watercolor. It's in my heart. Thank you, Ladan. Yes, we are not going to separate you from Anna from Fabriano. So let's go to our next uh, leader, uh, Victoria. Share your thought or opinion on this about watercolor. Uh, of course, thank you. Uh, watercolor is my favorite uh, technique uh, and uh, I have had different periods in my artistic life. It uh, was engraving, digital, oil, pastel, and uh, different, but watercolor, is uh, always been uh, in my heart. It's great, my love, and I always return to it. And I see a great horizon for growing uh, and develop uh, in watercolor. And it's intrigued me and uh, so interesting, uh, really. I love to experimenting uh, and in watercolor, it's so great to do. 
uh, to find new textures, uh, to see how it uh, um, guides us. And I think this is such a wonderful past and life in it, in Waterkawal. And now I see it, it, it's a pity that in Germany, uh, as they uh, call them, uh, that watercolor is uh, not so popular, but I see that in whole world, uh, a lot of uh, events, a uh, number of events. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, now it's going uh, um, a rebirth of uh, watercolor in all world. And even in China, where I was on symposium, it was the, um, a lot of uh, professors of art academies of each province in China. And the main topic of discussion was a, a revital of traditions of watercolor after the passion of oil. And um, I saw that I see uh, around that watercolor inspired uh, uh, fashion designers and uh, we see uh, its own prints uh, on the catwalks uh, and now uh, I think that watercolor is a trend, uh, fashionable and prestigious in all world. And uh, many people completely different ages uh, want to learn how to paint, uh, to develop uh, these uh, great techniques. And uh, for, for me, uh, watercolor, uh, it makes my brain work hard and uh, to hurt a bit faster. This is my life uh, and uh, my big love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, Christopher, please. Hi. Especially in South or Southern Africa, color is underrepresented and underappreciated. And I'm, I'm sure it's that way in a lot of other countries. Um, a lot of people think that oil is a more serious medium, um, but then I speak to a lot of oil painters and they, they think watercolor is too difficult. So it's, it's kind of ironic. Um, I think a lot of this stems from people having misconceptions about watercolor. Stream. Unforgiving, and it's not as unforgiving as they think. You can you can do some lifting. You can uh, work in a in a different style. They think that there's one style, and that is watercolor, and not every artist's watercolor or oil or acrylic color is equally as valuable as any other medium. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, let's go to our next leader. Eileen, Eileen, please share your thoughts with us. Yes. Uh, when I heard Wynne and Aidan say something about being watercolor being magic, okay, it struck a very familiar chord because it's magic. <laughs> and uh, I remember my first exhibition was the magic of watercolor. <laughs> Anyway, um, it was also like Victoria, it was also the medium I kept going okay. back to because I was trying to learn so many things. And watercolor was the one medium I kept going back to. And uh, it's supposed to be a difficult medium, but I quite enjoy the unpredictability of it. All right. Or maybe I'm a little weird, but I enjoy the <laughs> unpredictability. And over the years, I think watercolor has taught me very important lessons. All right. And the very important, the first one is patience. So I think I've learned to be more patient with, with uh, work, having worked with watercolor. And I got over the need to be always in control. All right. I think women will understand me with that for that. Like we always want to be in control. All right. I got over that. I learned to let go with what I cannot control. All right. Now to think... Uh, the other lesson I remember is to think positively, even if things don't work out. So after all, there's another piece of paper waiting for me to work on. All right. So I think over the years, watercolor has made me a better person. And I can relate more with more positively with others. And that's why watercolor is my life, just like everybody else. 
Thank you. Thank you, Vaili. Nice, nice. So nice to get all of your views on this. Um, for me, I believe watercolor is absolutely fun. And uh, better you start playing with it. Uh, this is my one liner for watercolor and watercolorist. So before I go to the last and final question, I would request you all to keep your uh, answer to be a little bit specific and to the point that we can have more time to uh, question to other leaders and uh, Anna as well. So my last and the final question to you all that an important choice uh, that you have taken during your artistic life. Uh, I would start with Ailum uh, this time. Okay. Well, I was. Okay. Well, I was thinking, what is this? I'm getting a message. All right. Um, well, I was thinking about there are always many decisions, but I think the most important decision I made was when I said yes when I was asked to teach. I felt that I was painting a lot. I was enjoying watercolor, but when I was asked to teach. I said yes, and it is my life now. Uh, being a teacher, being an art educator is what makes me fulfilled right now. And um, it's never ending and it just keeps on going. So teaching, I found that I discovered that teaching is my gift and uh, teaching is actually my calling. That's Thank you, Eileen. Uh, let's go to Christopher. Christopher, please. One of the biggest decisions I've made in my artistic career uh, was to change careers and become a full-time artist. Before becoming a fine artist, I had a successful career in graphic design. In fact, that's how I paid for art school. And in order to switch to being a full-time artist, I had to give up a lot of things, a lot of possessions. Um, definitely don't make as much money but it's all worth it because I'm so much happier. I can paint all the time. It's a low stress lifestyle. I get to be around other artists as my coworkers, I guess you would say, and my peers and connect with people like I am through Fabriano. And it's, it, I wouldn't have it any other way. And at the, at the end of my life, the amount of money I've earned doesn't matter uh, nearly as much as how much joy I've been able to spread through art. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, Victoria, please share your view. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, my choice uh, was made uh, um, when after 17 years of work uh, as art director in Women's Magazine, I decided to return to painting on full time and to my paper, to my favorite brushes and uh, paints. And uh, after a long time in uh, fashion art, uh, digital art, I missed uh, the creation of my real paintings. And it was not difficult choice. Uh, I dreamed about it, about uh, this uh, happy time um, when I will have more time for painting. And uh, this is the virus of uh, rhythm of life. Uh, it's more calm. I have time uh, for my meditation with the art, uh, with my watercolors. And I'm so glad uh, that uh, in this life, I find so many new friends in watercolor family. And um, a lot of festivals, biennials, it's a big impulse to create new, to develop, uh, uh, to exchange our energy. And Fabriana and Aquarela is an excellent uh, chance for each of us uh, to um, and a large impulse uh, for our art, uh, artistic life, I think. And um, this choice, I, I feel it, it makes me happy. Uh, and in my main choice is to create, which I try to do all day. And this is all my life, my medicine, my meditation, and my love. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Let's go to Min, Min Dam. Uh, Min, share your views on this. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, with, um, with passion to, uh, to watercolor, I want, I want few things in my life. Uh, so 
uh, I want to point out uh, the few important choice I make to lead to this uh, to this um, uh, to these things. So the first thing is that I start to teach uh, with um, like uh, like uh, like uh, Aiden uh, said before. I start to teach. I start to share um, my passion with uh, with uh, with other people, with students, and it make uh, give me a, a lot of joy, a lot of fun. The second um, um, the second important choice I made is that. Uh, I was confident at some point with my painting, and I start to uh, attend exhibition, uh, to go out uh, and attend um, uh, festivals. So, which lead to the Fabriano, and uh, uh, as you know from Fabriano, I met uh, many wonderful uh, people like Anna, like Didier, like all of you. And uh, from Fabriano, uh, I made uh, another important choice that I follow the Fabriano family. And we went to China to Lushan, where I met my uh, my wife, and now I am the father to the wonderful boy, half year, uh, half years old. So uh, this is all wonderful choice I made, uh, starting from uh, painting watercolor. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Min. Congratulations for your baby boy. Uh, let's go to our next uh, leader, uh, Ladan, please. Thank you. Uh, in my uh, opinion, uh, everything, uh, everything uh, we have done in the past and every choice that we have made has been important because it has made uh, what we are now. Uh, the past is over, but its impact is now and here. Um, it makes me my thoughts and my action, even what I have eaten, uh, have affected me directly or indirectly. I think uh, our recent uh, choices are uh, more important than past because we don't know what will happen in future and yet uh, we can change it uh, probably. Uh, I, um, I can uh, uh, say uh, I recently got accepted uh, to university uh, for PhD degree in art research, uh, but uh, I should not to register. Uh, instead, I uh, signed up for a psychology course in uh, London uh, College. Uh, my, cho my choice was based on, um, I strongly believe that uh, an artist uh, who doesn't know uh, philosophy or psychology will have nothing to say. Uh, I don't know uh, the consequence uh, of this choice, but I really satisfied uh, satisfied for uh, this. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aiden, please. Uh, hi. Uh, one decision. Uh, one choice that I made was uh, to open up to other people's art, not to be critical or judgmental. Uh, when I was in college, we were told only study the great masters. Uh, and it was an important decision for me to ignore that advice and to look at all art. And it allows me to see the wonder in every art that people produce. And it allows me to connect with people. So I'm connecting with people through art. I'm learning about their world through their art and through our art, not just learning about art itself. So it's not art for art's sake. It's art for communication, for to keep the wonder of the world and to keep my own spirit alive. Thank you. Wonderful, Aiden. Uh, Zineb, please share your view on this. Uh, well, uh, so uh, when uh, I did my, my baccalaureate, of course, my parents didn't uh, want me to do uh, uh, art uh, because they wanted me to uh, study law. I studied and uh, afterwards I worked for uh, many years uh, with companies. But uh, after, in uh, 2014, I made the decision to go study academic art. Uh, and it was in the United States, and it was a very good decision uh, I made. 
because uh, I, it's, uh, it's become a whole different experience for me because I started uh, to travel uh, not for work, but uh, uh, more for art and uh, having fun and knowing people and knowing artists and uh, 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 share, share uh, 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 I mean, uh, going out to do uh, plein air painting uh, in different countries. It's a really uh, a wealthy uh, experience uh, uh, doing art. And uh, the, the, I, uh, I don't regret uh, the decision because uh, also uh, uh, in, uh, you know, in uh, all this, uh, the responsibilities of every day with the kids, with the schools, with uh, all, uh, you know, the shopping, uh, when uh, I have this time to uh, focus and uh, uh, work uh, on uh, my art, you know, I forget everything, and uh, uh, it makes me, it, ma it gives me this kind of satisfaction and uh, this kind of uh, uh, pride that I made this uh, piece. Uh, and by the way, uh, I have my exhibition running uh, now, and I forget to tell you that I just recovered from COVID because uh, I went, I relaxed with a friend, I spoke with people on my exhibition, and then uh, uh, I had the symptoms and I uh, uh, tested positive. And, but uh, thank God that it was not uh, very, very painful. Uh, but I lost uh, the sense of uh, taste and the sense of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I, I can't uh, taste anything right now. Thank you. Thank you, Geneva. Uh, Christian, can you please share your view on this? Yes, I, I think there are a lot of choices we have to make during uh, artistic life, but I guess for me, the, the most important choice was to, to quit my uh, professional career as a graphic design artist in 2011, because over 20 years, there, there have been many successful years, but uh, more or less it was uh, to satisfy my customers, and this was a uh, 16 hours a day, uh, seven days a week job, and it was very stressful and uh, led me into a depression. And when I decided to paint watercolors, I, I made the decision, I, I just keep this as my own personal hobby. It's, it's more than a hobby, I guess, because it's a passion also, but I don't want to make a living from it. This is the most important thing for me to be completely independent and not painting for likes or for uh, for sales or for something else. Just to have the freedom to express myself on on the watercolor paper without any restrictions. This is probably the most important decision I I made in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Gustav. Uh, Win, please. Raul. Thank you. Um, I guess the most important decision that I made was to actually uh, start to incorporate other people in my art practice. I allocated more time to doing art. I moved up the coast from Melbourne and came to Queensland, back to Queensland, and painting full-time there felt quite isolated. So we started to work on setting up some art residencies and we were really blessed to have Yuko Negayama and Akira Mirata and Muriel Butia Chetran and Jonas Peterson come to Australia and be with us there. And that was an amazing experience. And then out of that experience, I think the most amazing experience was to come and get to know Anna and be part of the Fabriano family and network. And I think that experience of sharing uh, studios and working on having exhibition space for other artists to share with me has been the most amazing experience and, and that's continuing now with exhibitions in the studio, in Fish Lane Studios. It's just been an amazing thing to share with other artists. 
Thank you. Thank you, Wim. Uh, it's wonderful to hear uh, this kind of decision we need to take uh, in, at the verge of our life, uh, then which which actually defines us, uh, that uh, what kind of personality we are and what kind of uh, art and artist we are being together. Uh, I have a small uh, note from uh, Raksu Helmin, uh, Finland, one of the artists of Fabriano and Neparello. Uh, she has shared a few points. I want to just quick go, go through with her, her notes that she is saying about the perspective of art and watercolor. Uh, she's saying that I create to express and share my joy of life. Uh, when I paint, I'm the planet of creativity where all is well, even the daily news tells us the opposite. Making art makes me happy and helps me grow. She added uh, that even I enjoyed so much painting in watercolors, I always felt my paintings were not good enough to show in public. I convinced myself this is only a hobby and not so important. Then I happened to meet people who almost forced me to show my works and suddenly I invited to exhibit a big well-known exhibition in Finland and then have a solo exhibition in Germany. Quite scary. However, after this experience, I gave myself the permission to take my art seriously. Thank you, uh, Roksu. I believe it was a big note. I need to make it short and just read out uh, from, your, from your note. So uh, in this uh, moment, I would like to our leader, uh, our curator, uh, Anna Masinisa, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, what's your perspective about the role of leader in Fabriano in Ecorello? Anna, please share your view on this. Ra Raul, are you seeing me? You do? Yes, Anna. Yes. Oh, strange because Clelia, she's beside me one meter and she lost the, um, the web, the, the channel. Okay, let's uh, restart, Clelia. Just restart from the beginning. Sorry, it happened just now. So I thought we had lost the line. Uh, so uh, say it again. You are asking me the same questions? No, I'm asking you a little bit different. Perspective yes. is there. What's your perspective about the role of leader? Of it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> you you all know what I believe. What I believe a leader is a leader is uh, uh, someone someone who leads. And leading a group means to have a spirit of service and to be open and to to switch from uh, being someone who wants to always be in the very top and being someone that is always open to welcome and to search and to resolve the millions millions problem we have every moment and every day you will you experiment it first in your own house with your family you know maybe women do even more than men but it it, it is not true also uh, in, in a family, what happens? It happens that uh, the family is your family and you lead the family and uh, you are asked to solve the problems every half minute, sometimes even 10 problems together. And it, it is the same in any kind of uh, uh, group, in any kind of networks. Thank you, Anna. I have another question because I know I have a little bit of time that I can ask you a few questions. Uh, What's your vision uh, about Fabriano? Because you have seen that there are changes in technology and things are rapidly changing. Uh, now, a um, lot of technical interference is coming in uh, exhibiting art, um, pricing art, uh, just like if we talk about like NFT, Bitcoins, cryptocurrency, many things are coming. And youngsters are looking forward to uh, digitalize their art, to reach to the buyers in a different, different mode. So I would like to hear from you that uh, what kind of vision you have uh, with the platform and with the current generation. Anna, please. Uh, uh, those questions are completely unexpected. <laughs> I, I, I really have to be sincere I and, and say what I feel because otherwise exactly. I'm not prepared to, to, respond to, to, that, to respond to them. Actually, Raul, uh, you asked me something that I've been wondering all along my life because maybe not all of you know that um, I've been having a society 
uh, up to very few months ago. And my society was involved in design and in uh, art and many, many other creative fields, but uh, I have always applied the best technology, the, the new technology we had in the past 30 years. And believe me, we had very many. Um, and, and I have been using the technology as, as much as I could to improve the service that I was selling to the people. And um, I, I think that we have to be very thank thankful to the technologies because uh, uh, probably we don't even realize how much they are important uh, and how much they have been important uh, to have a, a good life first and to have a healthy life second, and also to Im improve the um, communication and the relation that, that we have among each other, not, not only with the Fabriano in Aquarello group, but with all, of, all, all the people uh, uh, we meet and we share um, relations every day. And in this last um, year and a half, uh, when the COVID arrived, and um, uh, we really had to face how to use uh, the um, uh, technologies that we were um, asked to use at the moment of the COVID uh, to, um, to keep up the relations, because this is the only thing we could do at the moment. Um, I kept asking uh, how much important, wondering how much important they were and uh, um, what was the best way to use them uh, to really give value to our life. And actually, I am not still able to give an answer because I tell you, uh, last year when uh, the COVID arrived, we had to switch very fast from the usual uh, personal meeting in Fabriano to um, the webinar uh, Fabriano in Aquarello. And it, it was so fast that um, I didn't even uh, at the moment realize what we were doing. And um, then this year we had to do again, uh, even if we, didn't, we wished uh, we, we shouldn't have do. And I, I hope this is enough now <laughs> because Again, I'm very thankful to the um, technologies. I hope that um, mankind will improve more and more. But uh, what I really feel in this moment is that art needs to be art. And art is also technology because, uh, as you know, I am a web designer. I am, uh, I, I have done, I am a video maker. I, I have done cartoons and I do a video art for theater, for example. But art is something else. Art is going to a museum and to be in front of the uh, Gioconda or Rembrandt or uh, uh, whatever great artists from the past, or even uh, in front of uh, uh, one of your uh, paintings and and uh, to to see a paintings inside the video inside um, the screen of the TV on in a, a maxi screen is not the same joy as to be in front of uh, a piece of art. It is not possible to feel the same. True. True. So thank you very much, uh, Anna, uh, for this impromptu answer. I actually ask this question without having any preparation. I haven't given any kind of preparation to it. Uh, so before I conclude, I want to uh, congratulate and thanks to all uh, family member of Fabriano, the community, Anna, uh, Clelila, uh, the entire Fabriano team, all the leaders, uh, admins, uh, the forum admins, uh, because, because of you, we are Fabriano and we are so proudly uh, visible in this current context as well. So we are concluding uh, today's, uh, today's uh, uh, interview with the a, with a hope that we shall overcome, we shall overcome again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabriano. Raul, thank, thank you, you to very you much. all also. And uh, I, I see some of the leaders that have, have not had the chance to uh, respond to the question, but maybe we can invite them to send a short video because after Fabriano in Aquarello, those um, uh, answers are going to become kind of a documentary. We want to, to grow a project with them. So uh, it, it, it will be our task to have all, all the answers, okay? Thank you. Thank you.
Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Let's go for La Femme now. La Femme, the roses. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.